Originally, I was going to review the last big exclusive game on the PlayStation 4, which I'm sure your viewers already know what I had in mind. But after word of mouth surfaced from friends that are playing today's subject, I figured I would dive right in alongside them and wouldn't you know it, I'm actually enjoying this game. I'm usually not the kind of person that would join bandwagons, but as soon as I start the game, I can see why this game has been generating so much buzz as of late, and it's definitely a great way to entertain yourself and pass the time, especially when at the time of this video, this whole crisis is still ongoing. You ever watch game shows like Takeshi's Castle or Wipeout? Those shows were very hilarious to watch on TV, seeing contestants one after the other fail obstacle courses when all they're trying to do is get to the finish line. It's not like Sasuke, aka Ninja Warrior, and Kiniku Bansuke, aka Unbeatable Bansuke, where skill and situational awareness are important, although these shows also have their fair share of humorous failures as well. Honestly, I never knew about Takeshi's Castle until the mid-2000s when the Paramount Network, which was called Spike TV at the time, aired a show called Most Extreme Elimination Challenge, showing mixed footages of Takeshi's Castle, while also being fan-dubbed with nonsensical commentary and having fictional names for the cast and contestants, and the show still holds up in 2020 with all its slapstick greatness. The game's developer, Mediatonic, admitted that the creation of Fall Guys was heavily influenced by shows like Takeshi's Castle and Wipeout, that they would make challenging obstacle courses in order to have players immerse themselves to having a game show feel, while also having the slapstick madness that the aforementioned shows are known for. Fall Guys was released on Steam and PS4 this past month, August 4th, and what's great is that Fall Guys is one of two games on the PlayStation Plus August 2020 lineup, making it free for me to download for my PS4 during that past month. All the avatars in the game are these jelly bean-like beings in which you start off as a bare-bones pink bean, but as you play more of the game, and I sure have sunk so many hours into it, you'll eventually win in-game currency called kudos and spend them to buy some more skins for your avatar. And when you win episodes, you'll get one crown per episode victory. And the golden crowns are special currency that you spend on some special skins, like dressing up your avatar as Chell from Portal. If you wanted that specific item for your avatar, you'll have no choice but to keep on playing and hopefully win more crowns because the shop is date sensitive and should you miss out on that item, other items will take its place on the shop and heaven knows when the items you want might come back. Aside from winning kudos, whenever you win or lose an episode, you'll also gain experience points called fame points and each level you reach will net you a reward, whether it be avatar skins, character patterns, or more crowns and kudos to spend, but as you can see, I've already maxed out to level 40 since one of the achievements is to reach level 40 within a season or else I start over. Yes, at the time of this video, we're still in season 1 and it was recently announced that a new season will begin a few weeks time, and it even tells you when it is on the status screen. If you're somehow lacking in kudos, there's also the option for microtransactions when you wish to increase your in-game funds, but I don't do that as playing through the game is easy enough to collect kudos, and with enough patience on the grinding aspect, you'll have enough kudos to buy what you want without the need of using actual cash. The whole game is you against 59 other contestants going through randomly selected obstacle courses, making sure that you reach the finish line in hopes of advancing to other random courses, and pray to heaven that you would be the sole survivor in the end. I do find the avatars really funny as the more chaos ensues, the more you'll hear these little guys grunt, although these grunts sound more like people making laser sounds. If this is your first time playing, and because these courses are randomly selected, you immediately have to learn to adapt on the courses as you start competing. But even then, you can't forget the fact that it's you against 59 other contestants and everyone would want to win the competition as well. Even with your instincts, it wouldn't take long for anyone to know that these courses won't give you so much frustration, and in these courses, just like Takeshi's Castle and Wipeout, physics can be your worst enemy. The studio, Mediatonic, stated that they would purposefully implement ragdoll physics and give some weight on the avatars to convey the comedic nature that both Takeshi's Castle and Wipeout brought on TV, which does make sense as making the players well-built like a ninja warrior would not only make the game less funny, but also less challenging if you make it through the whole game with ease. Despite the colorful and simplistic design, these challenges will no doubt try to punish you in various ways, either by getting attacked by swinging pendulums, to sliding down fully tilted seesaws, be stunned by flying fruits, be flattened by boulders, which is no doubt Takeshi's castle inspired, or with ragdoll physics, even you yourself can be your own worst enemy, as many times you'll find yourself throwing your back out at random despite properly landing on your feet. 
There will be times when physics can work in your favor, such as the starting points of the whirly gig where you let some of the spinning poles hit you on purpose at the right position in order to get ahead of the other players, or using bouncing pads in Slime Climb to ascend the mountain higher and avoid dropping into slime, no doubt inspired by Nickelodeon game shows that involve slime. That's not to say that all courses are enjoyable, because whenever you qualify for the next round, the next course you'll get depends not only on the amount of contestants left, but it's also luck-based and whether or not the course will work on your favor. Personally, I have more fun playing the race courses as I only got myself to worry about and it's easier for me to adapt to, though two courses that I usually don't look forward to will be the door dash where you have to find the right door to break through, but the frustration will come from you getting stomped on by the other players as if they are a mob of mad and crazy holiday shoppers on Black Friday. Or the slime climb because, as mentioned, you gotta ascend the mountain and avoid dropping in the slime or else you'll be eliminated from the episode and you gotta restart from round 1 all over again. Not only do you have to put up with moving walls, but you also have to worry about conveyor belts, boulders, hammers, swinging pendulums, and the one I dislike the most, the yellow logs, because it's very easy to slip off if you're not centered properly. Granted, some players will try to be jerks by standing on the logs or in front of the finish line to prevent others from qualifying to the next round, and that's the kind of situational awareness that you gotta keep in mind, because it is every contestant for themselves and you gotta do what you can to survive. Especially on survival matches like Rollout, where you're trying to prevent yourself from falling in the slime while sections of the log are moving with some open gaps to troll you, or this perfect match game, most likely be inspired by the show Get the Picture, in which you have to stand on the right platform that the screen tells you to stand on, which looks easy enough, but you'll find yourself trying to tolerate and survive a huge crowd that's trying to push you off the correct platform you're standing on, and believe me, it happens more often than you think. Often at times, you'll also be thrown into team battles with random teammates, and it's usually these courses that I don't look forward to, as it all depends if the team you're thrown into would have the edge of winning as well as hoping that hit detection doesn't try to mess with you. Whether it be Hoopsy Daisy, where you think you entered a ring, only for you to crash because part of your body touched the rims, or some rings will unfairly give points to the opposing team even though you clearly went inside first yourself. Or this game called Hoarders, where you have to accumulate a number of soccer balls to your side within the allotted time, and even then, unexpected hit detection will continue to rear its ugly head, which really doesn't make sense on the PlayStation 4, since the PS4 version should be more stable than in Steam, after hearing some people on the PC version are actually cheating through hacking. It definitely feels good when you've qualified rounds, but your adrenaline starts becoming intense when you reach the final round, where you just can't afford to make any mistakes. But just like any other course, physics is once again your enemy, and it's a very painful feeling when you're this close to winning, as a result of getting whacked by boulders, hit detection messing with you again, contestants catching on with your strategy, or just plain having overconfidence get the better of you. Even with enough practice or just having a fun time, failure is very prevalent in this game and believe me, you'll find yourself throwing so many f-bombs even more so than the angry video game nerd and many times, you'll find yourself having tension increased when you somehow qualify to the next round by the skin of your teeth. However, the feeling is spectacular when you're the last one standing and take the crown, but even then, that's not enough because you adapted to these courses long enough, you want to come back and win some more episodes. Heck, one of the achievements in the game is win 5 episodes in a row, which may be the toughest achievement to date. There's no doubt that the game has garnered so much popularity in just one month that people would consider Fall Guys as the next Fortnite, only without the guns and fisticuffs involved. And just like Fortnite, you can expect for the game to have the same treatment in terms of merchandises and the like. In addition, with Season 2 just a few weeks away at the time of this video, you can expect more Takeshi's Castle inspired courses to be added in, as well as the developers taking the Ninja Warrior approach by redesigning and making difficult versions of already existing courses. For as simple as Fall Guys is, it's still a fun game to play and each victory and failure compels you to keep on going while at the same time master all the courses this game has to offer. As it stands, the game receives an 8.5. The game is available right now for Steam and PS4, though I'm confident that there will be an Xbox One and Switch versions eventually, and should all four versions have crossplay, man oh man with so much activity all at once, you can expect for the servers to catch on fire. It's that addicting folks, and with the gameplay so maniacal, I'm certain that this game will stay active for a very long time, and you can be sure that I'll come back to it every once in a while. The only thing that this game is missing is a rather 
crazy and very overly enthusiastic announcer calling all the action. Yep, I had to do it. I mean, you gotta have crazy announcers that love to scream at the top of their lungs for a comedic effect. Anyway, I hope you liked this video, and if you find this video or any of my other content interesting, feel free to subscribe to my channel at any time, as well as follow me on social media. So up next in the Chronicles, for real this time, we're going to be looking at the last big exclusive on the PlayStation 4. Again, just like in the top of the show, I'm sure you know what game I have in mind for my next review. Until then, this has been Musashi X, and I bid you all farewell, take care, stay tuned, and what do we always say? Don't get eliminated!